Are you looking to stain your wood furniture? We're going to show you how to use our gorgeous stain and finishing oil, which is a penetrating stain. We have it in five gorgeous colors, including our natural that doesn't contain any pigment. We're going to do a step-by-step -step on how to use it on softwoods, hardwoods, and what you need to do to get the surface ready. My favorite part about the stain and finishing oil is it is an all-in-one. It colors your wood and it also protects your wood. There is no additional top coat required with this. In fact, you can use it not only for your furniture, but for flooring as well. We have it available in six different colors and they can also be custom mixed. It's important to note that with our stain and finishing oil, you do need to practice on the exact type of wood that you're going to be using because different woods will look completely different. So for instance, if you are doing a tabletop and you have an inconspicuous spot on the underside, give it a practice there. Or if you're doing a brand new project, have a spare piece cut off and then you can practice on that. So why is the stain and finishing oil going to look different on different types of woods? And that is due to the softness of the wood. For instance, the pine, which is very soft, is going to absorb a lot of the pigment. The harder woods, such as oak, won't absorb nearly as much. And also you'll find differencing in the grain of the wood. You can see how oak has this lovely grain and pine, not so much. So that's how your main differences are going to be seen. Let's do a quick demonstration right now. We've got this soft pine here and we've got this harder oak. It will look completely different due to the things that we talked about. Okay, and pour some onto the oak. Just two little spots here. I always allow the stain and finishing oil to sit for about 10 minutes, especially on the very first coat. This is because the oils and the pigments are going to be absorbing into this raw wood. But just for camera's sake, we're going to remove the excess right now and you'll be able to see the color difference. You can see how the oak is very different than the softer pine. So you can see the color difference is simply due to the different types of woods. This is a harder oak, this is a softer pine, and you just get a different absorbency rate. So definitely do a practice prior to embarking on your project. Working with your sample, taking a look at it, say you want to have it a little bit darker, this is showing what two coats of the stain and finishing oil looks like on oak. But perhaps you're happy with this color depth. This is showing one coat, and then you just want to add more protection, increase the sheen, just add a coat of your natural stain and finishing oil. Again, you want to allow it to penetrate, sit on the wood for about 10 minutes prior to buffing it off. To see what your wood project looks like with any of these unpigmented oils applied, simply add some odorless mineral spirits right onto the wood surface and it's going to darken. Woohoo! It evaporates pretty quickly. But that gives you a snapshot of what your wood will look like with these oils applied. Notice how this new pine looks almost white and this has a bit more of an orange hue and that's because of the age. This pine has already been out and about and has had a chance to age or oxidize. Showing pine here, the older the wood, the darker it looks. You have a raw wood project and you need to prep it for stain and finishing oil. The best thing to do is to make sure that it is consistently sanded. You always want to start with a coarse grit, say around 100, 120, and then move up to a more fine grit, always sanding with the grain of the wood. If it's super rough, you could go down to an 80 grit, but always go from lower to higher and make sure you sand it twice at each level. 
So to avoid any blotchiness in your stain finish, you want to ensure that it is consistently sanded on all areas. And what I'm going to be doing here is just a little demonstration of what it looks like on wood when you apply the stain and finishing oil on an area where the sanding was against the grain and a little bit too rough. Again, this is a more rough sanding and against the grain compared to an even sanding preparation on this side. Anyhow, as you are applying your stain evenly over your wood surface, allow it a good 10 minutes to soak in. So this is a raw project that you have prepped with your, your sanding paper. Again, we wanna start with a 100 or 120, go to a 150 and end off with a 180 at the finest. If you go higher than that, you're gonna seal up your wood and it won't be able to accept much of the stain and finishing oil. Applying on our sample board, the stain and finishing oil, I'm applying a liberal amount, allowing it to soak in for a good 10 minutes. You really want it to saturate all the wood fibers. If you're getting a little bit light on your application of the stain and finishing oil, it's not gonna get a chance to soak in deep into those wood fibers. So really slap it on, use a lot, and allow it to sit on there for a good 10 minutes. Any areas where you see it's kind of absorbing right away, come along and push some more product into those areas. We have a lot of product sitting on here. It's been about 10 minutes. Now comes the part where I'm going to wipe it back. It's very important that you remove it with the same amount of pressure and the same type of applicator absorbency. So starting using our applicator pad from one end to the other with along the grain. There we go. That is looking gorgeous so far. I can use another pass. I can use this for another pass right now. If it was totally saturated with product, I wouldn't. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over. A little bit of pressure too much there. I'm just gonna go back and hit it again. Okay, so here we go again, left to right. Using the same amount of pressure. Now I am going to be turning this over. I took off a little bit more stain there than here. That's because this is becoming a little bit too saturated. So starting off with the new side. There we go. Same amount of pressure. And if you find that your applicator is still getting a little too, like depositing too much stain, try and get an area of the applicator that hasn't soaked any of the stain up yet. There we go. Ooh, okay, I can really see this spot here where I sanded against the grain. It's a considerable difference. Let me just show that to the camera. So you can see how it was sanded a little bit more vigorously here and it almost seems as though this area was a rougher and this one I sanded a bit smoother so it didn't pick up the stain as much. And that's what you're going to see all these blotchy areas if for instance you use a 180 grit uh, in only certain areas of your tabletop for instance. So that's why it is so important to be completely consistent with your pressure and with your sanding level. So you wanna make sure the whole tabletop has been sanded with the 120. Again, the whole tabletop with the 150. Consistently back and forth with the grain, never higher than a 180. One coat of the stain and finishing oil in cappuccino on this oak and it looks gorgeous. I don't want it any darker, but I know once it's dried tomorrow that I'm going to want to increase the sheen. Simply done by adding on a layer or two of the natural in the stain and finishing oil. You'll see that your very first application, like the cappuccino of the stain and finishing oil, you're gonna go through a considerable amount because 
it's really soaking into the wood fibers here. But when you come along to up your sheen and add more protection with the natural, you're going to go through very little, maybe about a third of what you used to stain it originally. And you don't have to stop with just one coat of the natural. You can layer it so every subsequent coat that you put on, you'll get higher sheen. In fact, I've gotten a semi-gloss with only three coats of the stain and finishing oil on hardwoods such as oak. If you feel you need even more protection, just put on another layer of the natural SFO. Never come along with something, say, as a water base because it's going to distort the richness that you get with this particular stain and finishing oil. On raw wood, two coats is the bare minimum of product that you would need to give you that super durable finish. Three coats, if it's something like a floor or a tabletop that's washed daily. Rest assured you don't need any other top coat on this particular product. Please write any comments below or questions and I hope you have found this helpful.